It's time for the James Hetfield Tamiya Sand Scorcher to get an all aluminum chassis upgrade. Excellent! Hello you wonderful YouTubers, thanks again for tuning into my show. Today we've got the James Hetfield Sand Scorcher. Check him out, how rad is he? We've even got the Hetfield license plates back there. A little passion project that is going to get a major upgrade today in the aluminum chassis from eBay. You know, we've got our instructions here and what it basically boils down to is we're going to take the front bulkhead off, slap it on the chassis, take the rear bulkhead off, slap it on the chassis, then we're done. Sounds simple, right? Can't be that bad. Let's give it a go. <laughs> what the heck this little bar here is all about and why that's hanging out. Um, really neat. It's actually like a torsion bar type of a suspension system. This is the exact same thing and it works in conjunction with the rear lower A-arms right here. So as the suspension compresses, it twists that torsion bar and provides more suspension dampening, which is kind of a neat design. Super, super antiquated, but very cool. Cavalier to Cadillac. How about that, guys? Pretty cool. If you had a choice, which one would you go with? <laughs> now, obviously, this is a much lighter version than this. And the Sand Scorcher already weighs a metric ton. But I'll tell you this. You know, these heavy chassis really help these things look realistic when they're moving. When the suspension's going, when their suspension's flexing as they're bouncing and jumping through the sand. Really helps keep that realistic look. So I'm, I don't care about race performance. This isn't a race buggy. This is purely going to look wicked it's going to make the truck or sorry make the buggy look even cooler as it's working on the sand and just look at this chassis i mean this thing is just oozing with awesomeness so this is going to be so, great let's get crack a lack and looks pretty much actually you know what i'm going to do first i'm just going to start by putting this one in by hand sorry for this for the mess and the chaos here guys Bear with me a moment. From there, we've got the front bulkhead, which I should give a little tidy up to now that I've got it out. So yeah, what I'm doing here, I'm just taking these wheels off, guys, so I can get a little easier access to those ball connectors. And then I'm gonna give, I'm gonna flip my balls here real quick. So in stock format, the this little ball connector mounts to the bottom of the spindle, I guess you'd call that. What I've done for this chassis, as you can see, is I've removed it from the bottom and stuck it on the top. So that's what I've done there, guys. Here's a bit of a closer look for you. So if you end up with this chassis yourself, you can see exactly how I've set mine up. It's just because the way the instructions here show, they show your steering servo right here. And from what I gather from the instructions, my steering servo would sit this way. And with my steering servo mounted as per the instructions, as you can see, my servo horn, when it's on there, is not going to line up with where it needs to be here. So I need to flip my servo around. Yeah, okay, that'll work. 
we can make this work. I think. More experimentation. <laughs> What's really going on? Hello, Tila. Yes. Show the internet your butt. <laughs> Very good job. Move it. Move it. The internet does not want to see your butt. One eternity later. Well, boys, I gotta say, I ran into a bit of a snag getting the front end um, put together on this chassis. And uh, I, I gotta say, I was having a hard time getting the steering servo fitted um, and getting it all to align and work properly. Um, I had a feeling there may be something wrong. And there's a couple of these mounting holes, those countersunk mounting holes you see there for the steering servo. They actually need to be notched out a little bit to get the steering servo to sit back enough to allow it to function properly. So um, I thought it, maybe I was taking crazy pills. <laughs> I took a few photos. I reached out to Oliver. I said, hey, Oliver, check this out. Am I, am I crazy or what? And uh, he got back to me right away and said, no, 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 no. Hang on. You're not crazy. There was actually an error in the manufacturing process. So he was kind enough to send out a new chassis to me. Basically, this has been somewhat redesigned, um, pretty minor. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it here in a hot second. But uh, anyway, thanks again, Oliver, for sending it out. I really appreciate it. Now let's take a closer look at the differences between the original design of this chassis and the new updated version of the chassis. So again, just comes in a nice sleek little box and it's got some instructions in here. But before we get into those instructions, I really just want to show you guys the difference in the chassis. I had a quick look before uh, I got on camera here today. So this was the original version of it here. And you can see how this upper chassis deck comes all the way down to these front posts. Now it's been somewhat redesigned, really just kind of trimmed off a section of that front piece. So right there, you can really see the difference. Just uh, a little bit of <laughs> weight reduction, I guess you could say. Um, this piece of this upper deck has been cut off here and is no longer there. And on top of that, these servo mounting holes you can see now are still countersunk, but you've got some adjustability in your steering servo, whereas before you did not. So if you are the owner of one of these chassis and you're scratching your head thinking you're a crazy person, you're not. <laughs> Just let Oliver know, send it back to the store, let them know what's going on, and they'll send you out a new version, which is uh, looking like it's going to work pretty darn good. So really quick, I'm just going to get this front end transferred over onto the new chassis and then proceed with getting the rest of it together. Enjoy the show. the factory supplied ball ends for the steering servo mechanism. So I'm taking these guys off and included in the kit, as you can see here is a arm that you are going to use 
and thread these guys right back on. And from what I see here, everything lines up nicely. Steering works, no binding. Beautifully redesigned. Thank you, Oliver. So I'm struggling a little bit with this part of the build where I've got this little sort of T-shaped um, metal piece. We've got the, this black plastic with a nut above it that clearly drops right into here. And if we look at the chassis, we've got that nice shape. This would drop right on in like so. Makes total sense. But I've got the optional rear skid plate, which seems to kind of, you know, it utilizes that same space. So I think I'm not supposed to use this if I have this. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> That's how I'm going to build this. I might be wrong, but uh, just trying to mock it all up, looking at how it all sort of fits together. I think that makes sense. So that's what we're going to go with. So I had to tackle one portion of this off camera. I'm going to show you guys what I did. Um, I was getting a little bit frustrated with it. <laughs> so I'll show you what I had to do. So if you've got the sand scorcher, you know you've got these torsion bars that help with your rear suspension. And so I ended up removing the, the top plate. I kind of played around with this little black plastic piece and I, and I think I've got this figured out. Everything seems to work pretty good right now. So you can see why I've got the torsion bars wrapped around that black piece of plastic which bolts in through the underside of the chassis right here with these nice countersunk screws. Um, that seems to hold everything in place and I cannot imagine that coming loose during a run. So I think that's how that's supposed to go. Correct me if I'm wrong Oliver but I'm pretty sure that's it. Now I've got my suspension working nice and these torsion bars which could move in and out theoretically uh, are held in place by this black piece of plastic. I think I'm good. <laughs> so where are we at? So we've got the, obviously the, the front and rear bulkheads are on. This thing is pretty much ready to roll. I'm going to put the upper deck back on. Before I do, I noticed that these little posts on here are not, <laughs> they're not long enough to actually touch down. You can see right through there. He's not quite long enough. So I'm going to switch some of those guys over to these longer posts, which touch down to the bottom of the chassis to connect the upper and lower decks. I got to do that. Then I got to transfer this little piece back here. Actually, a new one came in the other kit as well, but take that guy and it needs to be attached to the rear of the upper deck. And then it's going to mount to the transmission housing right inside here uh, for some added rigidity, which we will definitely need. Let's get crack a lacking, Phil.
So that's it, guys. I am done with this thing. It, uh, I will say this. This one tested my patience a little more than the last one. The, uh, the grasshopper slash hornet chassis was really silky smooth. This one, there were a couple moments when I was pulling my hair out a little bit. Um, primarily just getting the torsion rod set up. Um, if you're not, if you're not thinking about it at the time, you're going to be struggling with the torsion rod. So just heads up when you're putting this together, make sure your torsion rods are set up and, uh, you can kind of, I think that's right. What I've done there, it seems to hold it in place really well and, uh, and they're functioning as they should, which is good. The only other thing I really need to think about here is I'm going to have to, uh, center my steering servo. I just installed it just for the purposes of this video. Haven't centered it yet. It's brand new. And if you look with the long horn that I've gone on there, uh, it's definitely going to interfere with this upper chassis plate here. So I'll have to trim that down a wee bit, but that's not going to be a problem at all. That'll be super easy to do. And uh, I could use one of the lower holes in, in, uh, that are available on the servo horn. So that's not a big deal. I would say the only other thing, and it's nothing against the design of the chassis, it's just that stainless steel um, hardware. I love it. It looks nice. It doesn't rust, but man, is it soft. And I stripped a couple of uh, a couple of these screws, just putting it together, just even by hand, just so lightly. So you know, I guess my drivers are are a little on the old side too. Maybe I should get some new drivers. But uh, at any rate, I stripped out a couple of those. Nothing against the design. That's just uh, that's just you know the nature of stainless steel hardware. Um, and then what else can I say, guys? I mean, gosh, look at the thing. First of all, it is really gorgeous. This thing looks really, really cool. Check that out. What a clean design. Let's pop that body back on and see how that looks, hey? Oh yeah. So overall, I mean, it, it just looks awesome. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to have to find a way to get James Hetfield back in there, but uh, I'm really digging it. I think this thing looks really, really neat. This is a, a great, uh, a really nice chassis. This is a really nice chassis. Now, is this chassis going to make the Sand Scorcher, Rough Rider, whichever platform it is you're using, is it going to make it handle better? I, I really... I don't know. I don't think so. The added weight, if anything, I mean, this thing's going to have more weight to it than the, than the stock chassis did, which was, um, you know, pretty basic. So I would think the added weight might allow the suspension to work a little more realistically. I mean, this thing was never race buggy to begin with. It's certainly not going to be race buggy. Now, this is just a nice option part that you can, that you can purchase, you can install and, uh, and just really kind of enjoy this kit in a slightly different way now. Um, one thing I will say is that we can now use a conventional 2S LiPo. This is a hard case uh, pack, 5,000 milliamp. And this guy will drop right in. Now that is pretty cool. That is a really nice fit. Now I'm just going to need to make sure that my steering servo still has room to work. Looks like it just touches, so uh, we might have to do a little bit of trimming to make this particular pack fit. Again, it's a 5,000, so it's a little bit bigger. If you're running a four or a three, you're gonna have no issues at all with space. That's pretty cool. Having a 5,000 milliamp LiPo fit inside your sand scorcher is uh, a pretty cool thing. Overall, really, really great design. Thanks again, Oliver, for sending this to the channel. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please do throw them down in the comment section below. And uh, please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. That would be amazing. Really appreciate it, guys. Small channel. Every little thumbs up really helps a lot. And um, I'm going to get this thing finished up. Have an awesome weekend, guys. Be excellent to each other.